Hi everyone. I'd like to discuss something that's kind of interesting to me. It's not something I knew before, and it's something that I had to uh, struggle to get right. It's about rooms on roofs, and you'll probably find the same situation where you have got rooms and there's a raised floor. So consider what we've got on the screen over here. We've got a building, there's a railing around it, there might be a lift shaft coming up into the top, <coughs> as you can see over there. And that's the roof. And of course the roof, uh, that typically sits on the level. So over here you can see there's the roof level. Now on a normal level it would denote the floor finish, but on the roof level it denotes the base of the roof. And this roof is 400 millimeters thick. And then on top of that we've got a bit of a railing. So in some buildings you've got uh, party decks. If you have in New York they've got their nice... Uh, restaurants or their bars and they have rooms and of course within a bar you've got elements you've got families you want to be able to to pick all of those families up in a schedule there might be various reasons why you would like to create rooms on the roof and because we don't have a lot of geometry that will give us room bounding elements in this case the walls over here you can see they're room bounding so they'll create the bound but on the outside of this there's nothing that's going to help us to create that bounded room but now notice what's happening this element over there is a room dividing element it's a room separator and in its properties there's no option over here to lift it above a certain level now this is in a wireframe mode, so you're actually seeing through the floor. And what's happening is that that room divider is sitting right at the base over there, sitting at the bottom of the, of the roof. And that's not the ultimate problem though. The other thing is, very specifically, we'd like ultimately to have the room display a room legend. So over here we've got two... Um, items, they're both sort of peachy in color, the one is a, a room and the other one is room one, this room legend is showing us the room colors by name so based on the name of the room they will have a certain color and you can change those colors and that's not an issue. What is an issue is that around this roof boundary if I filter out the room separators you'll find that um, there are perfectly legal bounds for us to use. There you can see on the edge, it's, it's in blue, that's the room separator. It goes all the way around, bounds the edge of the roof. And then we've got a room separator from the edge onto that room bounding element and again at the top. So we've got two halves to this roof. And I would like to have this room populate that area. But look what it's doing. It's not it's not expanding, it's not seeing those those limits. Similarly, on the left hand side I've just done the preparatory work over there, I've grabbed it and lifted it off the roof, but look at what happens over here. This is currently bounded also by room bounding elements, so it's floating in space. That by the way is a great sort of trick if you want to do alfresco dining with some heating if it's necessary. But you can see that if I filter this out and I look at the room separators that they're also binding this room perfectly. Now in this case it's fine because it's floating in space but look what happens as soon as I drag this onto the roof. It just very simply says look it can't find good room bounding elements so what is happening here? And the answer lies in a property that not many people outside of the MEP world are familiar with ties in with one of the written blogs that I've done this week about what the um, the room calculation height is and that it's a property of the level. If we look at that, here's my roof and I've got the room calculation level on this actual level family and that is set to zero. It's an instance property. There it is. Computational height is set to zero. Now notice what happens when I switch it up so that it coincides with the finished floor level. So I'm going to switch this up to 400 for the computational height. 
And what the computational light really is, it's telling you at what elevation the room or the MEP space, that's the equivalent to a room within the MEP environment, is calculating its cross-sectional area and it's using that cross-sectional area to calculate the volume by multiplying it by the height of the room. So from the top to the base level, that gives you a certain height and multiply that by the cross-sectional area measured at a height of 400, that gives you your volume. And of course, if you do want to have your volume, just remember as well that in your uh, room options, you have to say that you want to calculate areas and volumes. It's a typical mistake that a lot of people do as well, make as well. All right, so once we've set up the room calculation height, computation height from 400, and we have a look at the roof, notice what happens. It suddenly, it realizes that it must go and place the room within that area. And that's fantastic because we can now see how the room separators are acting like they're supposed to act. And as soon as we change a room name over here, it's going to assume a new color because we've got the, uh, the colorful from the room legend. The colorful is easy to place. You'll find it on the analyze tab, one of the places. There's the colorful. You drag it onto the screen and you simply say that you wanted to have it by the roof and the name. That's not something that we're going to discuss in detail during this course. I think most people know how to put this in for a normal floor, but a roof is a special case and a raised floor as well. So we know now how to have the rooms exist and to see their bounds. That is at least a win as far as I'm concerned, but we're still in a wireframe mode. Look what happens when we switch out the wireframe to a hidden line. Suddenly, our room legend and our colorful is gone. Now, there might be many reasons for this. In general practice, we would go into our visibility graphics overrides and onto the room subcategories. And there you can see that my colorful is switched on. We know it's on because we saw it in the wireframe um, mode. But, you know, the colorful is on, so why am I not seeing it? Is it a filter? Is it something that is stopping my drawing from showing it to me? And actually, it's, it's quite simple. And that is that this room legend is sitting on the finished floor level. So, you will not see it until you do something, which is you select the floor, and as soon as you select the floor, you can see how the room legend appears again, how the colorful of the rooms appear. And that typically tells you that that roof is busy obscuring your colorful. So that is the element that must change. If you deselect it, it disappears. If you select it, it reappears. So that's the element that must change. And the way to get around this is to override the graphics of the view by element. And you set it to being transparent. Once you set the roof to transparent, you can see the colorful. Now, a roof is not as simple as this. Obviously, there are lots of components that might cause this to happen on your colorful. So it might take a little bit of work. So a heads up, if you are going to be doing a roof and you want to do a colorful for the rooms, just take this into account understand that you need to do two things. The one is to set the room uh, computational height to be at least equal to or above the elevation of the element, in, the, in this case, the roof. And then secondly, when you view it from the top to see the colorful, you have to make that element transparent. I hope this is helpful to some of you and uh, enjoy Revit. Until next time.